1972, Kawasaki Motors Corporation unveiled a new motorcycle for the American motorcycle press. Designated the Z1, the new Kawasaki was a motorcycle so powerful, so durable, so rideable, and so universal in appeal that it would become the new standard of excellence in the industry. What the press saw and tested during the next few months was the result of five years of research and development. A touring motorcycle of 903 cubic centimeters displacement. Its double overhead cam, four-stroke, four-cylinder engine produces 82 horsepower at 8,500 RPM. Its frame, running gear, and instrumentation reflect the foremost advancements in the motorcycle technology. The press was more than impressed. Six months after introducing the Z1, Kawasaki set out to prove dramatically that this new breed of motorcycle could perform up to its press clippings. On March 13th, 14th, and 15th, 1973, three Z1s were taken to Daytona International Speedway for a three-day assault on world and American performance records. The prime target, the world 24-hour speed endurance mark, the supreme test of motorcycle engineering. This is the story of those three days. Tuesday, March 13th, 9 a.m. Riders, mechanics, officials, equipment, and three Z1s arrive at Daytona. For three hot, humid days and two foggy nights, they'll be alone in this famous stadium, known for its ability to test and punish men and machines. Skip Newell, Kawasaki Motors Corporation, organizer of the event. Brian Farnsworth, Kawasaki Research and Development Manager, responsible for the riders, mechanics, and the motorcycles. Don Woods, Competition Director for the American Motorcycle Association and the Federation International Motorcyclist. The three Kawasaki Z1s, each of them 542 pounds of absolute power and reliability. Each of them the result of more than five years of research and testing. Two of the Z1s will be used in the attempt on the world 24-hour speed endurance record. These are as close to showroom stock as speedway conditions will allow. Engine, frame, mufflers, PCV valve, headlights, carburetors, air cleaners, ignition, brakes, instruments, all just as they come from the factory. The only modification to these two Z1s are for safety. Heavy-duty shock absorbers to withstand centrifugal force during banking, low-slung handlebars for rider comfort, racing tires for stability. The third Z1 will be used in the attempts on shorter distance, higher speed records. Although it is slightly modified, it is still considered stock by rigid standards of international competition. The modifications include minor adjustments to the engine and a fairing to break the wind. There is no change of displacement. It is still a 903 cubic centimeter power plant. This third Z1 will be ridden by Ivan Duhamel, Team Kawasaki's top road racer. New, most of Tuesday is spent preparing but there's a lot of bumps out there. There's a bump here that you just yeah. seem like you fly through the air. Coming out on here, just... Your speeds were good. Yeah, but uh, can a guy hold that for 24 hours? I don't know. Well, we're going to have to use all these riders we've got and just Oh, keep definitely. Just, uh, that first one is the, uh, the worst, you know? That one down there. Yeah. But it's not bad, but... Boy, your arm gets cramped holding the throttle open. You give the throttle to go down, and you let it go, it go up. Yeah. Okay, so... And the last lap, I did 9,000. Riders work to get the feel of the track, to get the feel of having a Z1 underneath them. It's bigger and heavier than the stripped-down road races they're used to, but it responds to the throttle with awesome power. They all know the Z1 performs well on the open road, but how will it perform under the grueling stresses of sustained high speeds on a steep bank track, where G-forces compress shocks and glue the bike to the pavement with temperatures in the hundreds, where every moving part must perform to the absolute limit of endurance. Across the tracks, the timing equipment is prepared. Timer Paul Shattuck. He'll spend the next 60 hours in a 10 by 20 foot timing booth, counting the laps, calculating the lap's time, recording the records, 
the light beam has to break every time a bike passes, accurately. The digital recorder has to register lap times accurately. The timer has to calculate speeds accurately. Brian, you want to go for the record tonight or you want to wait till? I want you guys to do whatever tricks you think you can do and we're going to try again just before we go home tonight. Tuesday, 5 p.m. Everything is ready for the assault on the first record, the world single lap, closed course speed record. Yvonne Duhamel takes the Z1 around the two-mile oval wide open. Even the mechanics are in awe of the power of this motorcycle. Kawasaki engineers designed the Z1 to give a touring rider with a passenger and saddlebags full of gear the power to pass quickly on the open highway. On this clear track, without passenger, saddlebags and gear, the Z1 makes motorcycle history. Time 56 and 21 one hundredths of a second. The speed is 160.113 miles per hour for a new world's record. Sundown Tuesday, the first record has fallen. Duhamel has taken the Z1 around Daytona faster than any rider has taken any motorcycle, stock or otherwise, around any closed course. Celebration is brief. The night will be spent preparing for tomorrow's record attempts. Wednesday morning, sunrise brings questions there is no question about the Z1's power and speed. But what about endurance? Does this beautiful piece of machinery have any hidden flaws? Does it have a breaking point? Today, the Z1 will pit its touted four-stroke reliability against the world's 10-kilometer and 100-kilometer marks, and against at least 2,400 miles of asphalt it has to conquer before it can claim the world 24-hour endurance record. The testing consumes much of the morning, there's a lot of concern that tires will wear excessively. Speeds on the straightaway will hit 170 miles an hour. Track temperatures will reach 155 degrees. Goodyear is there with its best road racing tires, but engineers are unsure they can hold up under 725 pounds of bike and rider at extreme high speeds and temperatures. Now you're warming up at 158. That was tacking nine. Okay, let's get a stand and try another tire. Wednesday, 7.12 a.m. Things move quickly. As time nears for the 10 and 100 kilometer runs with a special Z1, the two 24 hour bikes are undergoing preparations. Riders try out the bikes for comfort. Pads are added. Headlight angles are checked. Handlebars adjusted. Everything is made ready for a trip equal to the distance from Los Angeles to Baltimore. The pit area is prepared. Restraining lines painted. Fuel truck moved into place. Everything in accordance with strict AMA and FIM regulations. In other words, your first time. So we'll make up for the standing start. And then, We'll be right there setting. We'll keep you posted. Everybody ready? Go 
Okay. 7.20 a.m. Yvonne Duhamel brings the special Z1 onto the track for the attempt on the 10 and 100 kilometer world records. This attempt and all the record runs to come will be from standing starts. Official Don Woods moves onto the track to signal the start. Z1 is not only a smooth, powerful motorcycle, it sounds like a powerful motorcycle. Sometime or other during those three days at Daytona, everyone comments on the rich, muscular, throaty sound of the Z1 engine and how much like a Grand Prix race car it sounds. Farnsworth gives Duhamel a white flag to signal one more lap for the 100-kilometer record, but Duhamel thinks he sees the checkered flag and slows down to come into the pit. The Z1 has gone faster for one lap, for 10 kilometers, and for 100 kilometers. I thought that was the last lap, I said, that's I know, I know, it's okay. Everything's fine, you got a record. Well, you're not a checker flight. Beautiful, you did it. Hey, Yvonne, you thought that was a checkered, huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, get the stand. You told me to give you a white lap so you know that's the last one. What about Goodyear? Check it off, yeah. Yeah. We could bump it up. Yeah, that's what I thought you were going to do, and so I gave you the white flag. Yeah. It's okay, I think we still got it. it you. Well, you definitely got the record. Yeah, you were running the 144. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we had to to make up for that standing start average, but we didn't want to tell you that you were going 145. I knew. You backed we didn't up. want to tell by the tap. And yeah. we didn't want to tell you to speed up. I was already 9 and back, much. and 85 yeah. almost it's around. It's okay, it was all right. I want to get over 140. Yeah. 141 mile an hour average. Oh, okay. I want to go over 140. That's why I started pushing a little bit more in the end. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, 150 if you've been looking at right. <laughs> <Average. laughs> All right. Oh, I think your tire could last now 150 for... <laughs> He's ready to try another one. The challenge now is to go farther. The next 24 hours is the test. Eight riders, two stock Z1 motorcycles, and 24 hours of hard road. Yeah. You got yeah. that half a lap apart? What? For time and purposes, they want you a half a lap well, apart. Well, not to stay, but to start. But when you're racing out there, don't come up and pat him on the back and stay there all day. You know, if you can race away from him or he race away from you. See what I mean? Because when you come close, you the race printer prints close. Maintain 112. It should stay a half, yeah. a, lap start apart. half a lap apart. Yeah, he's going to start. Bike. Number two bike will start first. And then another uh, minute, you'll start. So you get over there, too. Nine thirty-three a.m. Everything is ready. Almost matter of fact, the 24-hour record run begins.
During the early running, the riders find it difficult to maintain the disciplined even speeds necessary to guarantee tire performance and a 24-hour record. The riders are racers, men who instinctively want to push a machine to the far edge of its performance capability. And the 120 mile an hour speeds do not challenge the Z1's limits, not by a long shot. As Cycle Magazine put it, horsepower flows out of the Z1's double overhead cam four cylinder like water from an artesian well. It simply never stops. Wednesday, mid morning. Every 70 miles, the riders come in for gas. At 100 plus miles an hour, the Z1 is averaging about 24 miles a gallon, only one third of its normal cruising mileage. I got the bike early. Not the back to zero. Right. 55 miles, Jim. Something around there. Each rider takes his turn on the oval. Team Kawasaki riders Cliff Carr, Art Bauman, Masahiro Wada, Gary Nixon, and Hurley Wilbert, John Weed of Motorcycle Weekly, Cook Nielsen of Cycle Magazine, and Brian Farnsworth. Each turn is an hour and a half, over 150 miles with just one pit stop to break it up. At trackside, Don Woods records each lap for AMA and FIM certification. Records will be broken on the way to the 24-hour mark. Meanwhile, Farnsworth keeps time for a different reason. To make sure that the pace stays even and that tire fatigue is minimized. in the afternoon. Track temperature now over 100 degrees. The speed must be kept down if time-consuming tire changes are to be avoided. And the riders get orders from Brian Farnsworth to hold the Z1 to a steady 120. No. 3.30, the first tire change. The new unstretched chain is tough to get off, and nine full minutes are lost to the clock. for number three. 120.016 miles an hour. Number two. Number two has now completed 261, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 269 laps. Time in that last lap was 74, 65. And the time for number two's last lap was 74 and 65 hundredths of a second. 120.562 miles per hour. 
Wednesday, 6 p.m. As shadows lengthen, the track temperatures cool, and the pace is picked up. Brian Farnsworth takes his second turn. More than any other rider, Farnsworth feels at home on the Z1. He's already logged over 100,000 miles in prototype test riding. He knows every little engineering improvement that was made during the five years of testing. And he's confident that the Z1 will have the world endurance record by tomorrow morning. By 6.15, the sun is down. The Kawasaki team is nearly 10 hours into its 24-hour challenge. 14 to go. Say 130 miles an hour, uh, it's a little bit difficult to stay within the light. So you have to kind of watch yourself at first, but you get used to it after a while. The bugs are getting a little thick and uh, they tend to uh, cloud up your face shield a little, but we have some tear-off things we throw away that seem to be keeping the bugs out of our eyes. So the bikes are running good. We're averaging uh, probably 120, 125 miles an hour per lap at night, so that's better than we expected. 8.30 Wednesday night. One of the bikes coasts to a stop in the blackness, a quarter mile from the pit area. Its chain has thrown a master link, and for any record to count, the pit crew must go out on the track to make the repair. Can I have some light in here? Yep. Okay, adjust that chain up. Bikes glide through the night. Everyone knows that their insurance is gone. The lost time means only one of the Z1s will be able to break the record by a wide margin. through the night and through early morning fog so thick that they often couldn't see where they would be in the next second. It's the 21st hour, three to go. So far, so fast. Farnsworth orders the pace cut to 90 miles an hour. Assured of a record, he wants to make sure that he doesn't cause a breakdown by pressing the tires, riders, or bikes too hard. With every lap, the confidence and the excitement mounts. Thursday, 9.30. They've done it. Set the record they wanted most. Prove that the Kawasaki Z1 can go farther faster, longer than any other motorcycle in history. Get right in the middle there. Where's, where's Randy? Randy, get right there in the middle. Get in the middle there. Get in the middle. Better shot. Too much trouble. <laughs> Too tired. I got some right here, B.F. Right. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Got a cup? Here, get that for you. Skip. Got a cup? All right. All right. All right. That's it. March 13th, 14th, and 15th, 
1973 at Daytona International Speedway. The four-cylinder, four-stroke, 900cc Kawasaki Z1 rewrote motorcycle record books. In all, 52 world and American performance records were broken. But most important, a new standard for motorcycle excellence was established. The standard of the Z1.